give me your hands and let's agree together and let all of our enemies crumble at our feet for whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and at the name of jesus christ satan has to flee yes we've got the power in the name of jesus christ yes we've got the power in the name of the lord morning. Amen. Love what I'm feeling. I appreciate the presence of the Lord being here. Nice to have all of our visitors. Amen. Uh, some faces I haven't seen. It's good, it's good to see you all this morning. Amen. I, I appreciate my pastor, my pastor's wife, Brother Jim and Sister Sarah. I love them. Um, I appreciate the reason we're here is Jesus Christ. Amen. So thankful for him and what he's done for us. Amen. Um, those of you that don't know, um, we got the news this week that um, we have a date for my kidney transplant. It's November 14th. We're, we're going to go down to IU in Indianapolis, and uh, my daughter is giving me a kidney. So thankful for that. Amen. Amen. If uh, we could all stand one more time, turn to the book of Jeremiah, 38th chapter. Jeremiah, 38th chapter, I'm going to start at the 6th verse, read down through 13. Amen, if you're there. Amen. 6th verse, 38th chapter. Then took they Jeremiah and cast him into the dungeon of Malchiah, the son of Hamalek, and that was in the court of the prison, and they let let down Jeremiah with cords, and in the dungeon there was no water but mire, which is mud. So Jeremiah sunk in the mire. Now when Abimelech the Ethiopian, one of the eunuchs which was in the king's house, heard that they had put Jeremiah in the dungeon, the king, the king at that time was Zedekiah, then sitting in the gate of, of Benjamin, Abimelech went forth out of the king's house and spake to the king, saying, My lord, the king, these men have done evil in all they have done unto Jeremiah, the prophet, whom they have cast into the dungeon, and he is like to die for hunger in the place where he is, for there is no more bread in the city. Then the king commanded Abimelech, the Ethiopian, 
saying, Take from hence thirty men with thee, and take up Jeremiah the prophet out of the dungeon before he died. So Abimelech took the men with him and went into the house of the king under the treasury and took thence old cast clouts and old rags and let them down by the cords into the dungeon of Jeremiah. And Abimelech the Ethiopian said unto Jeremiah, Put now these old cast clouts and rotted rags under thine armholes, under the cords. And Jeremiah did so, so they drew up Jeremiah with cords and took him up out of the dungeon, and Jeremiah remained in the court of the prison. If we could all say a prayer over this message real quick. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this wonderful feeling we have this day. This morning, Lord, I pray that you bless this message, God. Have your mighty way this morning, Lord God. I pray, God, that you strengthen us, Lord. Have your mighty way, Lord. Love you this morning, Lord. Strengthen us, God. Hallelujah. Everybody say amen. Amen. Real quick, I want to go over this. This uh, scripture here is um, Jeremiah was a uh, a prophet that that preached the truth, and uh, he was preached. He he was uh, asked to preach gloom by by God wherever he went. He preached gloom and doom. It was uh, read everybody their rights, so that he was a very hated prophet. Um, Abimelech the Ethiopian, one of the eunuchs, which was in the king's house went to the king on his behalf. A eunuch is defined in the Bible as a, as a man who was castrated. Okay? He lived in the castle. He was castrated. And he was in charge of the king's women or the wives and concubines. Okay? Or he was a certain male worker in the castle, and it, this was to keep them from the desire of the women that were in the castle. Okay? So Abimelech was an Ethiopian. Um, I also want to read in um, Lamentations real quick. This is also Jeremiah. You don't have to turn there if you don't want to. I'm, I'm going to Lamentations, the fourth chapter, 52nd verse. He's in this, he's still in this uh, dungeon, and he says, My, Mine eyes chased me sore like a bird without cause. They have cut off my life in this dungeon and cast a stone upon me. Waters have flowed upon me, my head. Then I said, I am cut off. I called upon thy name, O Lord, out of the low dungeon. Thou hast heard my voice. Hide not thine ear from my breathing at my cry. Thou drawest near in thy day that I called upon thee. Thou saidst, fear not. Okay? Fear not. People do some pretty cruel things to each other in this lifetime. Um, this was a very cruel physical thing they did to, to Jeremiah and a very cruel spiritual thing that they did to Jeremiah. Everybody in this church that is filled with the Holy Ghost, God has a job for you specifically set aside for you to do. Yeah, how many believe that? Amen? Amen. God has a job specifically set aside for you. If you have been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, you have been chosen by God, you have been called by God, you have been appointed to do a work, a cause, a ministry for God. Quit fighting it. Do the work that God has called you to do. Amen? There's a position, there's a spot that God called you to do that only you're going to be able to do. Only you're going to get a hold of somebody maybe that Nobody else can get a hold of, but you have got the opportunity to touch somebody or somebody or, or someone. You've been chosen to do a work for God. You've been called to be His servant. You are going to be a witness to someone, live your life in front of someone. There is something that only you are going to be able to do because you have been called by God and chosen by God. Your steps are ordained by God. You are not just taking up space because one day somebody in Argus, Indiana needed to be filled with the Holy Ghost and you just happened to be there. That's not the way it works. Amen? You are filled with the Holy Ghost for a reason, for a purpose, and it's not just to sit on a pew. You are supposed to impact your world. And by I mean your world, that's 
your surroundings, your family, your church, your workplace, your friends. Amen. You are supposed to impact your world. Everybody, and if you're, if you're living in a, in a rough world right now, change your world. Change your world to where you can get to this, this world that God wants you in, this life that God wants you in. You are a child of God full of power and full of authority and anointing. The devil and his demons fear you because of the power that you possess once the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Amen. Because the power that you have is greater than their power. Amen. They fear you. Amen. Because that you humbled yourself and repented of your sins, you came to an old-fashioned altar one day. Because you went down to the water in the name above all names, that mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And you came up spotless, sin-free, a new creature. You turned your life around. But once the Holy Ghost, once the Holy Ghost came upon you, you receive power and authority and the anointing of Jesus Christ everywhere you go. Amen? Everywhere you go. We believe and we call upon the name and the power that has come upon us to use upon the enemy, the devil, and upon your healing and sicknesses that come upon us. This is a real thing. This is a true story. Amen? This ain't a fable. You can heal the sick. You can ask and you shall receive. You can speak and you can move mountains. Amen. We're quiet this morning. Amen. We're quiet this morning. You have been fire baptized. We will perform miracles. Amen. Anybody see miracles today? Anybody? Amen. Brother Sean, stand up for a second. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Sean. Thank you. Brother Sean testifies that when he went in with his cancer, everybody else that he started cancer with has, got, has passed on. Everybody else has, has, has gone on. They're, 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 they died. Amen. You tell me why Sean's still here. I'll tell you why Sean's still here. Because he's a walking miracle. God's got his hand upon that man. God's got a testimony for that man's life. <laughs> Amen. When Sean stands up and says, hey, when I got cancer, my life changed. I decided to become closer to God, not walk away from God. I knew that God was my only help. Amen. I knew that was the only problem. In this situation, that's the only place I could actually go. Amen. Nobody else had that where he was at. He had someone to call upon, somebody they could cry out to, and they heard his cry. Amen. I'm so thankful for Brother Sean. Hallelujah. This is a real thing. This is real. I believe in miracles. Amen. I believe that. Amen. You have power. You have authority. You have dominion in you because the king of all kings, amen, has chose you and, and greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. That's just not a, that's just not a few, a few words. I mean, that greater, greater is he that is in you, Brother Sean. Amen. Than he that is in the world. Amen. I, I, I've been on both sides, like Brother, Brother Jimmy talks about all the time. I've been on both sides of the fence. <laughs> Amen. I've been in the world where in a dark, lonely place, and I had nobody. I had friends that said they were my friends, but when I really needed them, they were not there for me. Amen. When I really, really needed something, when I really need to uh, change my mind, to change my life, they, they, they did not walk with me. Amen. I didn't have nobody. Amen. I was in a lowly, dark place. Amen. Whew. Jeremiah's name means appointed. Jeremiah names means appointed. He was appointed from his birth. In fact, before he was even born, the Lord said, I formed thee. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Before you were ever born, I knew you. I ordained you as a prophet to the nations. Before Jeremiah was even born. Amen. Jeremiah was a kid, and he said, Lord, I can't talk to him. I can't speak. 
The Lord said, don't even look them in the face. Don't even look in their eyes. Don't look at them. You just do what I called you to do, Jeremiah. Amen. You just do what I called you to do. Jeremiah felt intimidated because he was preaching and he was talking to the adults and elders. And he felt intimidated. Why am I, why am I talking to these? Why am I going to these older people telling them that the, the nation's about to fall, that the way they're living's wrong, that they better straighten up. You better start living right. You better start walking right. You better start talking right. Why am I the one at 12 years old telling these older people how to live? Because I ordained you, Jeremiah. You just do what I told you to do. You just speak the words that I told you to speak to them. Amen. And the adults, of course, of course the adults were rough on Jeremiah. Man, who is this kid? Who in the world does he think he is? I've been living for the Lord for 40 years. Who does this young kid think he is to come and tell me I'm not living right? Let me explain something to you real quick. Amen? People, there's people in this church that don't agree with this ministry up here. They, they buckle with the pastor. They buckle with Jim. They buckle with me. They buckle with Brother Dale. They fought Brother Howard and Sister Howard the whole time he was pastor here. Well, we're getting quiet now, aren't we? If we had a 12-year-old boy come up here and start preaching, hey, if we had a 12-year-old boy, 13-year-old boy, 14, 15-year-old boy, Clayton, if Clayton was called to preach, amen, come up here and start reading you your rights, there's people here that wouldn't agree with it very much, would you? But I'm telling you, there are little 12-year-old, 14-year-old preachers. There are. Yes, they are. Look on the internet. Fire, buddy. They, they're preaching with fire. Amen. I'm thankful when a young boy stands up and gives a little sermonette and says, hey, I feel God's calling on me. I'm thankful for that. Amen. I'm thankful for that because the world's calling also, my friend. The world's got to call on our young people. And if you don't support the young people, you don't support the ministry, It ain't going to take very long to shut the doors of a church house. Amen. You, tra- cha- you chase the youth out of here. And there ain't going to be a youth for tomorrow. Amen. Amen. As a child, Jeremiah was intimidated to preach to the, to preach to the elders and, and to the elders. Amen. He was intimidated and he felt bad about it. Jeremiah... It was Jeremiah that spoke and said, God's miracles are new every morning. Every morning. I want to read some of these, just a few scriptures from Jeremiah that, that, that touched me. Jeremiah, 17th chapter, 6th, 7th verse says, Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when heat comes, but, when, but her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Amen. Jeremiah, the 20th chapter, ninth verse. But his word was in mine heart as a burning fire, shut up in my bones. Amen. That's, we, we all know that one. Jeremiah, the 29th chapter. 11th verse says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. Amen. These are, these are scriptures that Jeremiah, way back when, taught, and, and we still preach today. We still, they're comfort to us today. Amen. Jeremiah taught us about the potter's wheel, how God will put you on a potter's wheel and mold you and make you. Change you from the person that you were to the person he wants you to become. Amen? And, and some people are still on the potter's wheel. He still wants you to become the person that he wants you to be. Not who you want to be, my friend. Amen? The way that I wanted to be was, was, a, was a wreck. Amen? And God put me on a potter's wheel one day and used me and worked me and molded me and made me the man that he wanted me to be. Because I let him, I let him work on me. Amen. He was a powerful, 
anointed man of God. Most of the time when you're anointed and appointed to do something great for God, you have to deal with disappointments along the way. And in Jeremiah's behalf, it was people. People despised him. People just did not like him. Jeremiah was a powerful man of God. The problem for Jeremiah was God told him to prophesy doom everywhere he went. Therefore, when he preached to the nations that they were going to, they were going to fall, and that you better get right with God. One day you're going to stand before him, and you're not going to go to heaven the way that you're living. Hallelujah. You better start walking right. You better start talking right. You better start living the way God wants you to live. People didn't, didn't like him. The nation didn't like him. He did not have any converts. <laughs> Listen to me now. Jeremiah didn't have anybody that would say, hey, Jeremiah's preaching this Sunday. You want to go listen to Jeremiah? No, oh, I don't want to hear that goofball. I don't want to. All he's going to do is tell me how bad I'm living. Who wants to hear that? Amen. Jeremiah did not have, I mean, Noah. Noah had more converts than Jeremiah. At least Noah had his family. He took six people under the ark. Jeremiah had nobody. Nobody. Listen to me now. A prophet called by God had nobody that cared for him. Abimelech and the king were the only two that really understood what Jeremiah was trying to do. No one cared for him. Because people only like to hear a preacher preach about good things. And, and, and things that, you know, you're living okay. What you're doing is fine. Amen. That's why church houses are full. Amen. Because they'll tickle your ear and they'll tell you exactly what you want to hear. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then, and then, yeah, you'll just come back next Sunday and, and, and listen to it all over again. But when a, when a preacher starts preaching the truth to you and you've got to change your ways, you can't do that and go to heaven. When a preacher starts preaching that, some people get offended today. They get offended about it. Hallelujah. You preach blessings to everybody and, and tell them how wonderful they are and, and how much you love them. They, they're going to love you. You tell them that they better get right because you're going to stand before, before a judge one day. Amen. Listen to me. Everybody is going to stand on your own two feet in front of a judge. Mom and dad's not going to get you there. Pastor's not going to get you there. Preacher's not going to get you there. Your best friend's not going to get you there. This is a one-on-one. One-on-one. We walk with you and God. One-on-one. One day you're going to stand before the Almighty. And I, I would not want to stand there and listen to the excuses that people are going to tell him that day. I, I would not want to hear those. You can, I mean, there's going to be plenty of them, right? I, I, do, I do not want to hear that for, from anybody. That'd be, that's going to be a sad day. But there's going to be people that, that hate you and despise you for what you stand for and what you're preaching. You get a preacher that will stand in the gap and preach that hell's still hot. Is that a place that you want to go? Ten seconds. Ten seconds in hell, and you're going to realize you made the wrong decision, my friend. Ten seconds. Everyone is not going to make it to heaven. Now, there's preachers and there's churches that's going to tell you everybody's going to be there. Everybody's welcome. Let me, I'll tell you that. Everybody's welcome. He said what? No man would perish. God wants everybody there. But everybody's decision is not going to be there. Everybody's not going to choose it. Amen. When, when you get a preacher who will stand in the gap and say sin is still sin, it doesn't matter if you've walked through the church house doors for the first time today or if you've been walking here in here for 40 years. It does not cost a thing to be nice to people, to be kind to people, and not be you know, cruel to people. Amen. You cannot, you cannot be hateful to people all, all through the week and then come and sit on a church house Sunday morning and pretend like everything's fine. Love. Love is what Jesus preached. Amen. There are going to be, there are going to be a few people that don't like the way things are being preached and taught, especially in today's modern world. Amen. Where everything's okay. God loves me. God loves. God won't judge me for this. 
Says who? Have you read this? Have you read this? He's coming with a righteous judgment, my friend. Not what your neighbor thinks, but what you think. Your ideas and his ideas are, are as far from the east as from the west. Amen. Your righteousness, the Bible said, is as filthy rags to him. Amen. Jeremiah was a kid preaching that you better get right with God because one day Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar is going to come and he's going to destroy this whole nation. He's coming with his army. He's going to wipe out this whole place. And they would be like, would you somebody shut that kid up? He's 12 years old. Okay, then his teenage years, he's still preaching the same thing. Nebuchadnezzar's coming. As a young adult, he's preaching, hey, Nebuchadnezzar's coming. He's going to wipe out the whole nation. You better start living right. You better get your life right. Amen. Sound familiar? Noah? Amen. Into his adulthood years, into his, he, as he's getting older, he's still preaching. Nebuchadnezzar's coming. You better start living right. This place is going to get wiped out by Nebuchadnezzar. And they're like, shut him up. Man, we've been listening to him for 30 years, 20 years. Somebody, man. Why do we get why, why are we why are we putting up with this guy? Amen. So the people decided to hear to, 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 they did not want to hear this preacher anymore. This man of God, they said, let's come up with a way to remove his voice. Amen. Let's come up with a way. So they took him, put him down in a dungeon. And this dungeon ain't what, what we consider a dungeon in the old days. This dungeon is what they call in the Greek word a cistern. A cistern. And it was a, an old dried up well. A well. that There's no water in it, but there's mud at the bottom of it. Muck. And what they would do, is they'd, they'd put ropes on each side of the top of this well, and they'd put the armpits of Jeremiah or these, whoever they're putting down in these, and they would grab the rope on both sides and they'd start lowering him down into this pit of darkness. Okay, and down in the, whatever it was, 20, 30 feet down in this, this well is muck. Just nothing but mud. Cold, cold mud. And when they'd get within 15 to 20 feet from the bottom, this guy would signal for this side to let go of the rope. And this side would take the rope and just rip it. And they'd rip the armpits of this man, whoever's going down in the, in the cell. They'd rip the flesh right out of his armpits and he'd drop into this cold mud just that's all it was so he'd just drop and that that was his prison he'd be stuck neck high neck deep in this mud and that's that's what they did to Jeremiah they stuck him in this cell this prison and then they put a stone on top of it the last thing they heard from Jeremiah was his screaming and his cries from this ripped flesh in his armpits. They're like, that's what you deserve, Jeremiah. That's what you get for preaching to us and trying to help us out all these years. That's what you get, Jeremiah. And then we just shut him up. I don't want to hear his cry. I don't want to hear him pleading for help anymore. So we put a stone on top of that. So we ain't going to hear him no more. And that was his prison in the middle of the prison yard. All because he preached the truth to these people. These people convinced the people of power, to get this preacher and to put him in a place where they did not have to hear his voice anymore. Because people don't want to hear you preach the truth anymore. They want to hear about tulips and daisies and rainbows and all good things. But when a preacher starts preaching about your wicked ways and, and quit backstabbing and quit talking about the ministry, quit talking about your brother across the church, amen, if the old saying, if you ain't got anything to say, don't say anything at all. Amen? And don't you dare be one of those people that somebody comes with you to you with something about your brother across the church that you want to listen to it. Somebody comes to you about a minister in the church and they want to talk about the minister or the pastor. Do not listen to that garbage because groups will form. Groups formed in this prison yard for Jeremiah. Groups will form. People will find somebody else that does not like the preaching in this church. They will. 
And they'll try whatever they can to shut it up. Amen. Don't get quiet on me. Amen. I'm preaching to you this morning. Amen. If a preacher's message is something that you don't want to hear, simple. Pick up that stone and put it on top of his prison, right? That's all we got to do. Block out what I don't want to hear, listen to what I want to hear. Amen. I can pick and choose whatever message, whatever. Any parts of your message you're preaching to me, preacher, pastor, I'll pick and choose whatever I want to hear. Amen. It's like you're saying to the preacher or to the pastor, man, boy, that's a preachy message this morning. That's just, that's just the pastor being the pastor. That's just the preacher being the preacher. You, you need to be careful. Be careful. Let, let me make this real simple. There, there's no one in this church house that loves you more than the pastor and his wife. There's nobody that prays for you more. There's nobody that, there's nobody that has shed more tears. For you and your family, than Sister Sarah and Brother Jimmy, Brother Howard and Sister Howard. There's nobody. Amen. Amen. Nobody. Nobody. He cares for you a lot more than I care for you. He cares for you a lot more than you care for me. He does. Amen. <clears throat> Do not lower his voice. Do not lower the voices of the ministers. Do not let anybody talk bad about the ministry of your church, let alone the brothers and sisters of your church. Amen. When one of our preachers are up here, you should be taking it all in. You should be listening to it. You should be taking notes. You should be supporting them, amening them. Don't let somebody else be the first one to amen them. Amen them and back them. Support them. Amen. Have that men mentality that when they're preaching, Lord, when, when we say, bless this message, pray with me over this message, Lord, speak to me this morning, God. <laughs> Lord, correct me, Lord, where I'm doing wrong this morning, God. <laughs> Lord, turn me around this morning, Lord, change my life, God. <laughs> Lord, touch me in a place I've never been touched, God. Touch me in that place only you can touch me, God. Deep in that cold black heart of mine, God. Touch me, God. Turn my life around, God. I'm ready. I'm ready for a change in my life. Hallelujah. Help me, Lord. Direct me, God. Keep me humble, God. Keep me kind-hearted, Lord. Hallelujah. Here's something that I got from this message, this understanding. As they put Jeremiah, they, they, this group got together, and after years of contemplating and complaining about, man, why does that guy shut up? Finally realized we could put him in a dungeon. All we got to do is put him and drop him in this mud, this mire, and, and, and put a rock on top of it. We'll never have to hear from him again. They put him down in this well because they wanted to be above the ministry. They wanted to be. They don't want nobody preaching to them or, or above them or at them. So all we got to do is put them below us. And we don't have to hear from him anymore. Amen. That's exactly what they did. That's what people do today. We do. Amen. Some people want the ministry to be lower in their eyes. They want to look down on the ministry. How do you do that? The ministry, you just do not let it impact your life anymore. Like I said, you pick and choose what you want to hear. Amen. You put them in that little dungeon, and when something that you don't like, all you got to do is put that rock on top of it. Just one ear and out the other. I don't have to listen to that. I don't have to listen to that. You're putting a barrier between you and your ministry. You can, you can hear whatever you want to hear. Choose to hear what you want to hear. God's going to bless your family. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, thank you. That's great. Thank you. Hey, we'd really love for you to come up here when somebody else is up here praying at the altar and pray with them. Oh, yeah. Put a rock on top of that. I ain't going to pray with nobody. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hey, we're going to have a 500-soul revival in this church. Ah, yeah, yeah. Hey, we just show up for the revival all week long. What? I ain't showing up every night this week. I got better things to do. Amen. Oh, put that rock right up on top of that one. 
Make sure it's, I ain't going to listen to that. Amen? Amen. In the scripture, Josephus, the, comment, the commentator, said that when they dropped Jeremiah in the muck, he sank to his neck and chest area. That's it. Everything else is in the mud. Cold mud, 30 feet down, cold mud. And that was, that's where he was going to spend the rest of his life, was right there. Rock on top of it, they never heard him again. Amen. In the book of Lamentations where Jeremiah is talking about mine enemies chased me and soar like a bird. Mine enemies have cut off my life and cast a stone upon me. Anybody ever seen birds chase another bird out of the area where they, they're in the air and they peck it and they just, until it finally gets out of their area, that's what they did. That's what Jeremiah is talking about. They, they pecked me and they yelled at me and they, they cursed me and they bothered me. They hated me until they finally got me out of their way. That's what he's talking about. He said, Jeremiah said, I called upon thy name, O Lord, out of the lower dungeon. He writes that God came to him in that dungeon and said, fear not. Fear not. He did not send an angel. God did not send an angel. God did not send a friend. He didn't send a a family member. He didn't send anybody else. He says that in that lower dungeon, when I was down there in this miry, mucky clay, God came to me himself and said, fear not. Hallelujah. Didn't tell him anything else. (laughs) Hey, fear not till next Sunday. Then it's not a battle. Then it's an expectation. Well, I I just want to hang out here until next Sunday. Right? No. He's battling in there because God said, fear not. And he said, fear not. He didn't tell him how long you're going to fear not. He just said, fear not. What? You you see where I'm at, Lord? I'm down here in a terrible place. Fear not. No one yelled down. Nobody took the stone off. It's still dark. It's still dark down there. And nobody took the stone off and said, hey, Jeremiah. Everything's going to be okay down there. Nobody. Jesus came. God, God came himself. God came to Jeremiah himself, and Jeremiah knew that voice when he said, fear not. Jeremiah knew exactly who said, fear not. That's my Savior. That's my Lord. That's my Master. That's my Master. I think we should put some faith in a fear not every once in a while. Amen? Put some faith in a fear not. If God has to explain to you why everything is going to be okay, you have no faith. Amen. Anybody else ever been there? In a, in a lowly place and God said, hey, don't worry about this. Like, what in the world are you talking about? Now, don't worry about this. Amen. Faith is, all I know is that you said it's going to be okay. And if you said it's going to be okay, I have nothing to worry about because you have got a plan for me. You said fear not. You said don't worry about this. You said I got this. So I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to sleep tonight. I might be down here in this mud, but I'm going to to tip my head back on the back of this well and I'm going to rest my head there tonight knowing everything's in your hands. You've got this because you said fear not. Amen. I want to thank you because if you said fear not, you have plans for me. You trust him. Amen. Trust him. God was already putting things into place for Jeremiah. At the king's house was a man named Abimelech. And he went to the king to intercede on Jeremiah's behalf. I want you to understand this. Anybody ever have a friend kneel down and pray for you? He could be at his house. He could come here on Monday night, prayer meeting. But you know they're praying for you. Amen? You know something's, something's taking place because you feel it. You feel it in your spirit that somebody's, somebody's praying for me. I feel, I feel something turning here. I feel something, something, something's happening here. When God tells you to hold on and doesn't tell you why, someone else will pray 
your answer into action. When God tells you to hang in there and he doesn't tell you why, someone else is going to the king of kings on your behalf. He's going to the master on your behalf. And they're going to pray for you and get a hold of the master and put some things into action for you. Amen. Let me. When a Holy Ghost brother or a Holy Ghost sister or a pastor or, or a pastor's wife gets you on their mind, and, and, and they, they go before the throne for you, and they cry tears, and they're praying, and, man, there, there's nothing. I mean, who said that earlier? Somebody said, Sister Tammy, she knows that when the people, she wants these people right here praying for her. When something's going down in her life, and, and she's got a loss, or, there, or there's something wrong in her life, she knows that we're going to pray for her. She knows we're going to lift her up. She knows we're going before the throne for her. She knows that, and I'm the same way. When, when, when I'm in trouble, I know. I know my brothers and sisters are praying for me. Brother Sean, you know we're praying for you. Amen. Knows it. Amen. Abimelech told the king that these men are trying to kill Jeremiah. And they put him in a, in a dungeon well. We got to get him out. Amen. Jeremiah and, and the, Abimelech went before the king. And, and basically before the throne of God and said, hey, you know, has anybody ever been to a place where they just do not feel like praying? You're so tired of battling and wore out and everything. You just don't feel, am I right? Anybody else? You feel like, man, what, you know, I just don't feel like praying today. I just do not feel like this right now. Abimelech took it upon his hands for Jeremiah. I've got this, Jeremiah. I see your pain. I see, I see your agony. I'm, I'm going to the throne before you, for you. Amen. The king told Abimelech, get 30 men and go get, go get Jeremiah out of the dungeon. Go get him. Abimelech went and got 30 men and went to the treasury. And they got these old clout rags and, and uh, leather straps. And why did the intercessor, why did they go get these rags and, and leather straps for? Because if you'd ever felt the pain of a rope, if they throw this rope down in this dungeon, and they tell you to wrap it around, this is the only thing that's going to be pulling you up, is right here. You get that rope on them burns that they just ripped that flesh out of you a few days ago. Buddy, that's going to burn. That's going to hurt. So they took these old clotted rags, and they wrapped it around that loop, these leather straps, and they wrapped it around because they knew their preacher was already hurting. They didn't want to hurt him anymore. God knows the wounds that you've already got opened up. And when the intercessor comes for you, he knows that you're hurting and they want to try to make this as soothing and as comfortable as they can for you. So they took these old clotted rags and they wrapped them around the loop of the rope and they dropped this down and they said, Jeremiah, put these rags up underneath your armpits. And it's not going to hurt near as bad as that raw rope. That raw rope is going to burn, brother. Put these clotted rags up underneath there. So they put them on. And these men... 30 of them, rope down in the well, 30 men on this side, and Abimelech is right here watching them pull him up. Take it easy, brother. She's coming up out of the mud. You got him. A little bit, low, a little bit slower. Pull it. He's coming out, guys. He's coming out. And they're pulling him up little by little. And then all of a sudden, he's getting to the top. He, he's right here. He's right here. And they grab a hold of Jeremiah, and they pull him out. And he lives the remainder of his life right there in the prison. He, he lives right there in the prison, okay? My point is we need some brothers and we need some sisters to grab a hold of this rope and pull and lift up this ministry in this church house. Amen. Pick up your lift up. When you're praying, pray for your pastor. Pray for your pastor's wife. Pray for your, your ministers. Pray for your brother across the church. Pray for them. Lift them up. Pick them up. Grab a hold of the rope. Give it a pull and lift them up. Anybody can put somebody down. It's easier if, if I was to come here and, and, and Brother Bo here was to pull me down, it's easy to pull me down. But it wouldn't be so easy for me to pull him up here. Amen. Listen to me. Anybody can cut somebody down. Anybody can. Lift him up. Lift him up. Edify him. Amen. Amen. God knows where you're hurting at. 
He will send an intercessor. It will not hurt your wounds anymore. Uh, when you lift up your pastor, when you lift up the ministry, you're helping your household. You're helping your wife, your spouse, your friends, people across the church house, everybody in the church house, your children. Yeah. Yeah, I, I pray that your children aren't nowhere around if you, if you talk bad about the ministry of the church house. How long are they going to want to attend your church if you ain't got nothing good to say about them? Amen. Everything they do, everything we try to do, everything, everything the pastor and, and pastor's wife tries to do, all you got to do is cut it down and, and tear it down. And, and you have nothing good to say about it. That's terrible. I would hate to be that person and wake up like that every day. Every day, that's all you can think of is to tear down the ministry. Amen. When they pulled, when they pulled um, Jeremiah up out of the up out of the well, out of his prison, he prophesied. He said, none of you that pulled me up out of this well is going to die when Nebuchadnezzar gets here. None of you. None of you. And, you know, you, we get put in a place every once in a while, Brother Jimmy, and Jeremiah was wondering, why in the world did you call me to be a minister? And here I am in this lowly dungeon, Lord. This is, the, this is my reward. This is what I get. You, you threw me down, and you, you let them. Throw me down. And man, that had to be an awful place. Think about that. It's a, you're okay until they put the rock on top and it's completely dark and you're, you're in like 30 degree mud. Amen? Think about that. This is true. This really happened to Jeremiah, prophet of God. Jeremiah never understood why he was sent to this prison. What he thought was the worst place ever became the best place ever. When Nebuchadnezzar and his army came and wiped out the nation, nobody came to that prison yard. Everybody that pulled Jeremiah out of, the, out of that, they lived. Everybody. Amen. That's the way God works. Amen. Because of one prophet there. Amen. None of the men that lifted him up died. Amen. Have him come back to the music. I'm going to wrap this up. I know we get... We, we, we go through things. You know, everybody, everybody's fighting a battle. I know that. Everybody's got something. If, if we was to go around the room, everybody has got something that's bothering them. Somebody, everybody's got a giant in their life. Everybody's got that one, that one thing I just cannot conquer. Everybody does. Amen. And if, if you don't, I, I think you're, you're telling a story. Everybody's got something they're fighting. Everybody does. We have no idea why we're here or why we're going through this. Why me, Lord? Why, why am I going through this? Why are you going through what you're going through? Sometimes it feels like we're in our own prison or in our own little box. Amen. And this is, this is, my, this is the end. This is, where, this is it. This is where I'm going to be defeated at is right here. Amen. Listen for God's voice to come down to you and say, fear not and believe in it. Believe in it. That, that's the hard part, isn't it? Believe in it when God says, fear not. Have faith in the fear not. I'm not going to believe. I am going to believe. I am going to keep my faith. I'm going to believe in this. Amen. I'm not going to worry about this anymore. My answer is on the way. Come on now. Come on. Amen. I'm not going to worry about this cancer anymore. It's in God's hand. He told me to fear not about it. Amen. I'm not going to worry about this kidney disease anymore. God's got it. God's going to take care of this. My finances, my car that won't start. Amen. I've been there. We've been there. Amen. My children. That's a hard one, isn't it? My children. And but Lord, I know, I know they've heard this before. I know they've, they've heard this message. I pray, God, that they find a place to an old-fashioned altar. Amen. Because, I mean, when a child or a friend or a loved one's out running about, amen, hurting themselves, it hurts. It hurts me to see them going through that. It hurts, it hurts the parents. It hurts the family. When you see them running around doing crazy, goofy things, paying stupid tax, 
It hurts. It hurts me to see him going through stuff. It hurts me. Amen. Sickness going to come into my body? Fear not. Fear not. There's pain in my knees when I get up in the morning? Fear not. Fear not. Amen. Because when I cried, when I cried from my prison cell, Lord, have mercy on me, God. He came to me. I tell you what, it's been a rough year and a half for me and my family. It has. Amen. I, 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 those that don't know me, I'm a former Marine sniper. I was at Camp of June, and I got some of that toxic water in me, and it has destroyed my kidneys. I'm functioning about 8% on my kidneys right now. And my daughter's going to give me a kidney here in another month. Next month. Next month. How about that? Amen. <laughs> It's been a long time. It's been, I mean, to me, it's been a long time. It seems like a long time. A year and a half goes pretty quick, though. But when it first happened, man, I'll never, I'll never forget the look on my wife's face when we were sitting in the doctor's office. And they said, you're in stage four of kidney failure. And I'm like, what? And they said, yeah, you're, you're in stage four. Didn't take very long before I was in stage five. And they put this tube in me in my belly Got a catheter hook up to my machine 10 and a half hours every night. Every night. Me and my wife went out to eat afterwards and went to a Longhorn Steakhouse to eat. We always we split a steak, we split potato, we split salad, and we hardly even ate. We just sat there and cried. Why? Why this Lord? And I'm telling you that, Brother Sean, I've been in the Bible a lot more the last year and a half that I have been probably the last 20 years. It's a, a sad. It's sad, but I'll, I'll admit that. I'll admit that. I'll take that one. I'm closer to God. I, I believe that I'm closer to God because of what I'm going through right now. My wife's closer to God. My, my children see a difference in us. We have faith. When he came to me a year, about a year ago, and he said, hey, I got this fear not. Amen. He didn't send a friend. He didn't send a family member. He didn't send somebody and tap me on the shoulder and I turn around to a stranger. God came himself. And he said, Brother Mike, fear not. When you're done with this, you're going to be stronger. You're going you're to have more. You're going to have more than what you had before. You're going to have more faith. You're going to have more joy. You're going to have more. Trust me. And buddy, let me tell you what, here next month, when I, get out, when I get out of there and I come back to church, I'm going to be joyful. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to be dancing a little gig up here. I'm going to be excited. I'm going to have some energy back. Amen. I'm going to be very thankful for what the Lord has done to me. Amen. And I'm going to tell him down at IU, this ain't nothing. My God's got this. I'm Fear not. Amen. Fear not. Amen. If we could all stand. I know everybody, like I said, I know everybody, everybody's got something they go through. Everybody's got that one giant you, 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 you just cannot beat. If, if it's your friends, if it's, if it's your friends, if that's your giant, man. I just cannot, I can't turn away from them. I love them. Hey, I love my friends. I had a rowdy group of friends. I've got a rowdy group of friends today. I do. We're rowdy. We're crazy. We're fanatic. We are insane for living the way that we live today because society tells you there's no reason to live the way you live today. And when you can dress however you want to dress, you can act however you want to act. God doesn't care. Yes, he does, my friend. I've got a Bible supporting me, telling me it does. Man, I'm asking you to face your giant. Face that battle. That battle you just cannot see. I can't walk away from my friends, man. There's not enough room for you and my friends, God. There's just not enough room in there. But I'm telling you, my friend, you've got an opportunity to start all over. All over. It doesn't matter what your age is. Start all over. Take a shot. Take a chance. What do you have to lose? Nothing but a fresh opportunity. A fresh opportunity. Take a Take a stand on your fear not today. Take a stand on your fear not today. My friend, I'm here to, I'm here to support you. I'm on your side. 
I want to see you. I want to see you all walk with me. Walk with us. Amen. I'm going to open up the altar. I appreciate you listening to me this morning. God bless you. Change your life today, my friend. Change your life today. Amen. God bless you.